Well, uh, hopefully there are uh, tens of thousands of people joining us at the moment, but uh, we never know. <laughs> That's the nice thing. But welcome to, uh, to this talk about polio. We're going to have a look at some of the topics and issues around polio in a very general sense because we have a fantastic panel of speakers with us this evening, or well, it's evening here in Karachi in Pakistan where I'm speaking from, that are going to talk about the very different angles that they come from looking at polio, uh, eradicating polio or polio survivors, or even those people who still live pol with polio today and post-polio syndrome. So we're going for a really wide uh, breadth of, of members on the panel. So I'm just going to open up with, with a few questions and then we'll hear from different people at different times. But very quickly, I just want to mention who we have with us here today. Um, first of all, my name is Darcy Lunn. I'm from the Global Poverty Project and also work on the End of Polio campaign. I have uh, Dr. Hamad Jaffrey from the Global Polio Eradication Initiative and also working uh, with the WHO, the World Health Organization in Geneva. We have Janice Nichols, who is a polio survivor and author of Twin Voices, uh, a, a book around being a polio survivor and, and her twin being a, a polio sufferer. We're also joined by um, Ksenia Solo, a Canadian actress, actor, um, producer, and looking at doing a polio movie at some stage in the future. Uh, I have to give a, a quick apology for Ramesh Ferris, a well-known Canadian polio survivor who unfortunately can't join us today. Um, but we do have Audrey King from the March of Dimes Canada, who is a polio survivor and also works very closely on post-polio syndrome as an ambassador. We're joined by Rod Curtis from UNICEF India, uh, who works in the communications for development. He's the specialist there and for the polio eradication unit. And we also have Fatima Riaz from the National University of Science and Technology BioReach Society founder and young Pakistani campaigner, campaigner on polio. Very brief introductions there, but I, I would love to uh, kick it off and, and get stuck into it straight away. And we're also joined by a couple of people from the Global Poverty Project to help uh, push in a couple of questions as we need. So my first question is actually directed to, to Dr. Uh, Hamid Jeffrey. You know, is it really possible to eradicate polio, I'd love to hear from your personal experience in that very broad uh, and wide question. Well, um, uh, polio as a disease meets all the um, scientific and technical parameters that are necessary for a disease to be eradicable. eradicable. But um, there were still a number of questions surrounding the biological feasibility of, of eradication particularly when the program was facing extraordinary challenges in stopping transmission of wild polio virus in uh, parts of northern India uh, because of the uh, density of population and other factors that uh, support polio transmission. And it really is the success in India uh, with interruption of uh, wild polio virus transmission that has really established beyond doubt now any questions about the uh, scientific or biological feasibility of polio eradication. It can definitely be done. Um, it has been done in most of the world. We are past more than 99% of the way. So it's now only a matter of political and societal will and uh, uh, financial uh, uh, solvency for the program to have the funds, necessary funds to complete the job. Over to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'd love to quickly throw it to Rod Curtis uh, from UNICEF India because I know he's worked with you, Dr. Hamid, and, uh, and continues to work in India. Over, over to you, Rod. What are your thoughts around, you know, is it really possible to eradicate polio? Uh, look, I, I have no doubt. Darcy, I, I'd just like to start by saying I'm having some connectivity problems, so if I drop out, I apologise for that. Um, Today I uh, received the update from Geneva as we do every week and there's 177 cases uh, for the world uh, in comparison to 500 cases from last year and uh, you know for me it was the greatest demonstration of the fact that we're actually getting quite remarkably close I think to being able to achieve this if all goes well. You know I agree with Dr. Jaffrey in saying that uh, there were very many experts who said that India could never get done. And uh, we have a round starting on Sunday 
where we're immunising uh, uh, 78 million children uh, around India. It's the last round that we're conducting for this year. We continue to do that because we know that it's very important that we continue to keep immunity extremely high in India. There's no room for complacency here. But India is an example that even in the most difficult environments um, where you're facing multiple challenges such as resistance, such as very poor sanitation, uh, such as a very high birth rate, that you can eradicate polio if you are able to reach each and every last child. And I think that's probably the great challenge that we face now in Pakistan and Afghanistan and Nigeria. If you look on the map of the cases that we have in the last six months, they're very clear areas. They're very small areas. Uh, and uh, I think if we are able to uh, meet the challenges of reaching, uh, of reaching uh, each and every last child in those areas, those missed children, then uh, we will be very close to getting this done in the next two or three years. Right, thanks, thanks for that, Rod. Um, fantastic to hear that you know live from India at that time. The, the next person I'd like to call is actually Ksenia. Um Ksenia is a Canadian actor and, and has just recently engaged with the idea of polio eradication and is quite new to, to this idea of polio and, and seeing it eradicated off the face of the earth. Ksenia, how do you feel about you know, do, you, do you feel it is possible to eradicate polio or how did you get involved in, in trying to be a part of its eradication? Sorry, because then you just need to unmute yeah. your mic. Cool. <laughs> yes, forgot that important fact, sorry. Um, I am very new to all of this and I, you know, I'm really ashamed that I really didn't know anything about polio, but how privileged am I to grow up in a in a world in a time and place where I haven't had to deal with it? So um, I I'm inspired. I'm inspired by all the people and and what you guys are doing and and what's happening all over the world. And how I got involved in polio is I was um, introduced to a wonderful author by the name of Kurt Sapolsky who wrote a novella called Too Early for Flowers about his life. He's a polio survivor and about his mother and how she, you know, really dedicated her entire life to saving her child and giving him a life that he deserved and and dreamed of. So I completely wholeheartedly believe that it is possible and that's me talking without any, you know, without too much scientific or or political knowledge. But I'm, you know, I, I think the most important thing is just to raise awareness, especially for my generation, you know, I can say that we're just not, we're not aware. So I think any way that we can, we can spread the message is, is really, really important. I think our um, host may have uh, lost his connection. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe. We did the first set of vaccine trials, publicly funded vaccine trials um, in the U.S. Okay, here you are. Over to you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, as you said, the March of Dimes was started because of the uh, polio epidemic. And the mothers actually went out and collected dimes. That's where the name came from. And then what happened? When the vaccines came in, polio was so-called eradicated. North America in the developed world, and the March of Dimes went on to other things. And then what happened in the late 70s, 20, 30 years after people had polio, uh, the, the polio survivors started having health problems. 
and they didn't understand what was going on at all. So there was a big international conference in 1981, which was the year of the Eve of the Six Tables, for the United Nations to discuss whatever happened. And I was lucky enough to go to that and do it since March of 19. We were at that conference literally from around the world. I remember there was even one person who came from Australia. That. So then we came back to Ontario and we went to the Marcia Dines. You were created originally, and people who had polio are now getting into the second wave of the situation. Some people, many people, were walking after the initial attack, maybe with a limp or whatever, but for the most part, they considered themselves non disabled. Then all of a sudden, Sorry, some of them aren't able to walk or, you know, getting into breathing issues and so on. So this is where the March of Dimes in Canada picked up the cause again. So I think when we're talking about polio eradication, we have to remember that it isn't just the first onslaught, the first paralysis. For these people, especially, you know, in lesser developed countries where people with disabilities are ostracized and not given the chance that we, you know, I've certainly been lucky enough to have. But uh, another good Sorry, reason... Audrey, um, I think we're just having a few problems uh, getting your audio. I think it's just coming in and out a little bit. Sorry about that. Oh. oh no, no, I, I, don't, I don't know where to start again. Anyway, I was basically saying that Another reason that we have to get rid of polio is because it isn't just the first wave of paralysis and consequences of that. Uh, 20 or 30 years later, for many people, there, the late effects of the early paralysis starts coming to the fore. And, uh, for some people, it literally is as dramatic as getting paralyzed again or needing to use respiratory equipment. So the March of Dimes here has been supporting people in that need in Canada, and um, this is what uh, this is what we have to do. I think that's great. Thank thank you very much for that. I'm I'm sorry I dropped out a little bit here from Karachi, but Janice, did you get a chance to to have a a, a chat with the audience about your experiences? No, not yet. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Um, my twin brother Frankie and I were six years old in 1953 when our epidemic struck. Uh, my twin died. Two of my friends died. I was paralyzed, but eventually made a, no, that's not me. I think that's Audrey. Um, but I made a wonderful recovery. Um, the, uh, doc, the doctor mentioned the March of Dimes and the polio vaccine uh, trial. In 1954, in the spring, while I was just beginning to learn to walk again, um, I was actually a polio pioneer. I was one of, of almost two million children in the United States, Canada, and Finland who actually tested the first polio vaccine. They made us feel like we were doing something not only for our own generation, but for all future generations. So in, in my mind and heart, why I work is because I just want this disease eradicated. We started in 1955 with a licensure, and I truly believe that we can get rid of it, and I devote my time to speaking out about the importance of eradication, and the only way we can get rid of it is through vaccination, uh, and vaccinating every child in the world, whether they are living in a developing country or a developed country. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. It's incredible to have polio survivors telling their story, um, you know, with us right, right here and now. And particularly, the next person I'd like to hear from is, is looking at someone who still lives in a polio endemic country, and her name is Fatima Riaz. And she goes to the National University of Science and Technology in Islamabad. I just want to ask the next question and start with you, Fatima. Um, and we might just get on to mute their mics. Uh, Audrey, uh, sorry, not Audrey, um, Janice, do you want to just mute your mic there? We're getting a little bit of feedback. 
Lovely, thank you. <laughs> um, Fatima, over to you. Now, the next question we'd like to move on to is, you know, how long do you think it... Obviously, everyone here is pretty shared that we think we can eradicate polio. How long do you think it will take to eradicate polio? Um, you just need to unmute your mic. Sorry, but, we still can't hear you, um, Fatima. Uh, I'm sorry, what I'm saying is particularly from Pakistan or the world over? No, I, I would say from Pakistan, being in a, a polyendemic country of Pakistan. Right, okay. Um, Pakistan is extremely unpredictable. I mean, last year, this time, we had 100 and I think 36 cases, and now we have 47. So you never know what direction it is going to take. But if you ask me, I think it is it is pretty positive and I think in terms of awareness and in terms of the way everyone is finally focusing on the awareness issue of it because you always had demonization drives and you always have demonization campaigns but you never had the extent of the spotlight that you have on polio now that you had then. You know it is the spotlight that has been portrayed onto polio and the issues pertaining to it by the government, by the international organizations and that's why our students are also participating because at the end of the day if you do not realize a problem exists you cannot work for solving it and in the case of polio I think that um, I cannot give you a time frame I'm not an expert but in terms of the way the opinion of the common Pakistani person and the general man is changing I think is there's not going to be a long time after which we finally see Pakistan polio free inshallah <laughs> Inshallah, indeed. Fantastic. Thank you for that wonderful response. Um, Dr. Dr. Hamid Jaffrey, oh, back over to you. You're, you're head of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. Can you echo those sentiments of Fatima and, uh, and maybe give us some sort of time frame? Or what, what's your opinion on when you think this <laughs> disease can be eradicated forever? Yeah, I think first of all, I, I would like to congratulate Fatima uh, that as a as a student uh, in Pakistan, she is really um, uh, aware and keeping track of the progress in Pakistan and is 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 uh, quite conversant in the in the challenges that the in the program is um, program is facing. And clearly, this year Pakistan has seen good progress um, compared to the previous um, uh, two years. And I think how long it takes, and and I think we need to get back to the basics of, of what it takes to eradicate polio. Um, um, it's going to take as long as it takes for us to vaccinate every child um, in these uh, remaining countries. And even in these remaining countries, there are particular areas um, of these uh, countries in Nigeria. It's the northern Nigeria. In Pakistan, it is the uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, province and the, and the federally administered tribal areas, mainly in parts of Quetta and Karachi area. And then in Afghanistan, it is the is the southern region. We have to find ways to consistently vaccinate children in these in these communities in these areas. And there is no magic about polio eradication. You vaccinate children and you vaccinate them enough times, polio virus will go away as it has from most of the world. So the question is, how long will it take us in these countries to vaccinate all of these children? And and uh, both uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan are making progress. We have. Uh, evidence this year from Nigeria, even though the number of cases in Nigeria this year are more than the number of cases they had last year, the program in Nigeria is making some fundamental changes in their vaccine delivery planning and their vaccine delivery operations. And so we are beginning to now see a strong evidence uh, that more and more children are in fact getting immunized in northern Nigeria as well. So um, in our expert analysis, if this rate of progress actually is sustained and continues in Pakistan, in Nigeria, and in Afghanistan, we really should see the end of polio within the next two to three years, if not sooner. This can happen very, very fast if we can get to these children every time we plan a vaccination campaign and can overcome uh, physical barriers, security barriers, bar you know, gaps in, in uh, weak planning, poor planning, and particularly as Fatima mentioned, get over the hurdles of awareness uh, and and create demand in all of these communities for the uh, uh, for the polio vaccine. Uh, just remember that 
India saw its last case of polio in uh, January of 2011. In 2009, India had reported 741 cases of polio. So this can all go very fast. Uh, it's the matter that we have to get to these children and make sure that we uh, get to all of these children that these uh, programs have been missing until recently. Over to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hamid. That's, that's fantastic. It, it leads us beautifully onto the, the real question that I'm, I'm sure most of our audience is, is interested to hear, and that is, you know, how, what, what, what do we still need to do to eradicate polio? And Fatima mentioned about advocacy. Dr. Hamid, you mentioned some of the technicalities. But what do you think is, you know, one of the, the things that you do in your work that is the, the best thing to try and get us over the line to eradicate this disease? Uh, Rod, I'd like to start with you in from UNICEF from India and uh, you know what, what are your kind of quick tips on, on what you're doing or what you believe is, um, is needed to eradicate polio? Yeah look thanks Darcy and I'd just like to add to what, uh, to what Dr. Jaffrey said there. I mean it, it, it's it, there's no surprises in, in what we're trying to do here. I mean uh, you know polio has proven to, uh, to pretty much only exist in the bellies of small children. We need to immunize every child under five. I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's not for no reason that our slogan in the Global Polio Eradication Initiative is every last child. We need to reach every last child. And I, I think what India proved was that it, it, it took, uh, it, it faced the challenges that it had. You know, in the areas where there we knew we had massive resistance. We we brought in an, an, an underserved strategy to specifically deal with the religious leaders and the community leaders in those areas that uh, we knew could influence parents and caregivers to help us to immunize every last child in those areas. In, in, the, in the Kosi River in Bihar, where as a result of annual flooding, we uh, had difficulties in accessing children we implemented a strategy that uh, built huts, uh, field huts in those areas that enabled us to stay there, to, to draw up micro plans so that we knew where each and every child in that area lived so that we could access every child in that area. You know, um, the, the, you know what India should be extremely proud about uh, in its history of polio eradication is it's almost, it's, it's fanaticism in reaching every last child. And in a context like this, where in the states of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar alone, you have a birth cohort of 550,000 children per month, unimmunized children. And, uh, you know, the birth cohort of India is 27 million children per month. So the program had to work really, really very diligently in, in ensuring that it could reach every child with vaccine and that, that is the challenge. I mean that, that is the challenge that exists in Pakistan and Afghanistan and Nigeria. There are different challenges for different areas and that, that is what we say. It's local solutions for local challenges and, and, and that is our challenge. That's the, the, that is the, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative's challenge is to find the solutions that's going to enable us to reach the maximum number of children in the shortest period of time to ensure that we can raise these children's immunity so that the virus cannot find a home in their stomach. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, you know, right there and then, you know, th that is the challenge and, and then that is the solution. Over to you, Dust. Right, thanks, Rod. Um, I'd like to continue this question, you know, what do we still need to do to eradicate this disease from, you know, from the hands-on approach of Dr. Jaffrey to Rod spelling it out in India in a very simple and direct and fantastic way. But now moving back towards the donor countries, you know, if you were brought up in Australia like myself, polio was eradicated in 1972. So we, we're kind of disengaged sometimes. But Ksenia, I'd like to go back to you from someone from Canada where polio was eradicated in 1979. You know, what, what can we still do uh, to, to eradicate this disease? What do you think? Uh, like I was saying before, Darcy, I think raising awareness is the most important thing. Awareness is power, and awareness is inspiration. And I feel, you know, the more people know, the more they will be inspired to help. 
And it's crazy to me that there's so many awful, awful diseases in this world that there's no way to stop and that have no cure. The fact that there is a vaccine, there is something that can be done. I just feel like it would be criminal if none of us did anything, if none of us knew anything, if we didn't have access to information and, and education. And I feel like you know, all we really need to do is is be well informed and come together and fight through the political and the financial and all the obstacles that we're facing. But I think, you know, this is just it's a once in a generation opportunity and all we need to do is is raise awareness and I feel privileged that as an artist I can use my voice to do that, you know, so that's what I that's what I intend to do as, as much as humanly possible is just spread the message and let people know because I know what that feels like myself. I just really, like I said, I had no idea what polio was, you know, and, and now that I know I'm, I'm inspired to help and, and, you know, so I'll just, I'll keep spreading that message as much as I can. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Ksenia. Um, I know that, that we were certainly lucky at the, the Global Festival where we had 50,000 people join us at a concert with polio survivor Neil Young, the Foo Fighters and others and they, they seemed to really engage with this topic and issue in new and fresh and exciting ways and 15 million people followed that on, on our uh, live stream as well. But I, I'd like to steer it back towards uh, Janice and, and Audrey, people who, who still live with polio today and how do you how do you guys feel about, uh, Janice, I'll, I'll go to you first, how do you feel about you know, ending, eradicating polio and you know, why you would want to be a part of that legacy? Well, I want to be a part of the legacy because we can get rid of it. We've got good vaccines and all we need is education and proper funding and political will. In the developed country, uh, certainly in the United States, one of my concerns is that we have a strong anti-vaccine lobby here. Many young parents have not seen this disease or many other diseases and they're not vaccinating their children and they're not donating to causes to help children worldwide. I think we need a different kind of education um, to counteract all the misinformation on the internet. And I would also love to see more ways that we could make direct donations. I can donate through Rotary Polio Plus I can give money to Stand Proud in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, who does a wonderful job taking care of polio patients. But in the UNICEF USA program, I can only donate to vaccines in general. I cannot specify that my money go directly to polio. And because of my history and desire to see this disease ended, I would love to, to be able to direct my money each month to polio vaccines, not only through Rotary Polio Plus, but also through UNICEF. So that's something I'd love to see, and I'd love to see our, our Canadian actress be able to do more in terms of educating people in North America and Canada and in the United States. We work together for the first polio vaccine, both as children getting the, the initial vaccine and also through Connaught Labs in Canada bringing the culture medium across our borders for the pharmaceuticals in the United States to make the vaccine. And I think if people really knew what it was like before the vaccine, that parents all over the world lived in fear, I think we need the young parents to understand that all over the world, especially in countries where we have some extra money. We're on, on our worst day, we're better off in the United States than most 99% of the world. And I think we have to remind ourselves of that. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Janice. A really interesting perspective, especially someone who who suffers from polio. Uh, just just quickly saying about the some of the places that it's hard to, to give donations. Rod, you you work for UNICEF in in India. Did you quickly want to respond to to Janice's ideas of how you can't specify where your donation goes? Yeah. Look, thanks, Janice. No, I th I think that's a really good point. Um, and thank you for that. I mean, if you are giving in, in countries such as the United States or Canada or the America, you, you are giving uh, to UNICEF through the national committees. And, and, and it is difficult to, to specify exactly, uh, you know, which communicable disease you, you want to give to. You know, to be honest with you, I would encourage people who want to give to polio to give to Rotary. 
you know, Rotary um, uh, launched this campaign. You know, the the money that goes to to polio through Rotary goes directly to polio, and uh, you know. Um, Rotary fund us as UNICEF in India to the tune of five million dollars per year this year, and uh, you know I, I would really encourage people who want to give to polio to give to Rotary to go to the end of polio uh, uh, dot com um, and polio now their campaign. You know I think that is the the clearest, most direct way to ensure that the money that you want to give to polio is going directly uh, to where you want to see it to go. Over to you, Dust. Thanks, Rod. That actually makes a great point of uh, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, which is a collaboration of UNICEF, w the World Health Organization, uh, Rotary, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recently coming a part of this, and, uh, and, and all those people working together. So that's wonderful to hear. And also, I'll just chime in very quickly on Ksenia's behalf. If you give to Rotary in Canada, it will be tripled. Because that, that money will be matched by CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency, and then that will be matched again by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So if you happen to be in Canada, you can see your donations triple. Um, Audrey, just to go go over to you, back from the March of Dimes in Canada. Oh, that's a segue I didn't even mean, mean to do. Uh, you know, how do you feel about this eradication? How do you feel about people getting involved? or what, What's your take on how we can see this disease ended? Well, one of the w ways that I think is really important is in the schools because young children often have grandparents uh, who have had polio and the kids have to do projects. And I've encountered many people who have contacted me wanting to know where they can find information because their child is, is doing a school project. So I think that's one important. And one of our campaigns is that we're still here. And part of being here is to, to spread the word and educate people. And another thing, particularly in Toronto, where I live, but also in many of the major Canadian cities, is that we have very high immigrant populations. And people come here from other countries who have brothers and sisters or parents who've had polio and even even yesterday in a class that I teach of uh, support workers, home care workers, one of the, the students who's from Haiti started talking about her 20-year-old sister who had polio when she was eight months. She talked about how she bounced like a rabbit to get around, and then as she got older, she walked on her knees and had terrible calluses, and only two years ago, some doctor noticed her provided her with crutches. Now the family all this time had carried the child to and from school, but even though she's now educated and has a business certificate or whatever, even in Haiti, even the taxis won't take her because she's paralytic. So the, my class, hearing about this, they were all just kind of awestruck and shocked to think how different it is in places like Canada, North America, the developed world. So it's that kind of realization of not just the impairment, but the social and physical disability that it causes is a good way, I think, to educate generations as they're coming on through and getting into their own careers and getting into positions where they can get involved as well. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Audrey. And we might just get you to mute your, your mic there. That's great. Um, Janice and Audrey, it's wonderful to have your perspectives from, from North America and particularly talk about the, the greater issue of public health and community health in these places and bring those topics and issues to this very important conversation. Um, I'd now like to call upon Michael Sheldrick, who I haven't introduced yet, but he's just sort of been sitting there patiently. Um, finishing his law degree, I believe, but uh, when he's not doing that, he is the, the head of the End of Polio campaign. He's the global director there and looks at policy and, and advocacy. Um, Michael, you might want to address, you know, one of the, those big barriers that uh, Dr. Jaffrey spoke about earlier is the funding gap. You know, how do we overcome that or what, what can we do there? 
Yeah, thanks, Darcy. Um, I guess an important part, we often talk about um, polio and we tend to focus, I think, often on, you know, getting vaccines in, in people's mouths. But often in, in a country like Australia or Canada or the UK, there's actually something that we can do as citizens. Um, there's a very good quote from Bono, um, the front man of U2. Um, at the Make Poverty History concerts a couple of years ago, he famously stood up and told the audience of you know, youth and, and activists, and he said, at the end of the day, we can't blame the politicians because we have to give them permission to spend what is in the end our money. And I guess the message from that is really we can't expect our governments to support polio unless we are behind it. We need to get out there. We need to ask people, you know, our politicians and say, as our elected representatives, you need to support this. We can do this through getting petitions, going to our local members of parliament, our local senators. We can write letters to them. We can send them to endpolio.org or the endpolio.com where there's some great petitions to world leaders and stand up and say, we elect you. Now, as in 1988, as a global community, we made this promise to eradicate polio, not just a couple of countries, but the world. Every country signed on to this, and we expect you to support it. So, you know, there's a couple of stuff that we've been doing at the Global Poverty Project. Darcy mentioned the Global Citizen Festival. But in particular, I want to just give a shout out to Rotary. You know, there's over a million Rotarians around the world. And really, you know, each day in those local communities, hundreds of Rotarians, um, thousands, um, you know, across Australia, for instance, last week, wrote letters to their local MPs. I know a group of Rotarians went down to the parliament and did a flash mob outside, and they had the kind of end polio now banner. All that stuff is really important and really crucial um, to support in the end of polio. And I guess just in terms of this funding gap, you know, I know a group, the International, the Independent Monitoring Board, which oversees polio eradication efforts, said that, you know, one thing is clear, unless we see the funding gap which currently faces the global polio eradication effort, unless we see it plugged, then the goal of eradication may not be met. And I guess just to, I guess, move on from here, um, Dr. Jeffrey, um, I'm interested in, you know, obviously many of us are advocates, many of the people watching this will be Rotarians and advocates around the world um, who perhaps, you know, will meet with our local MP. If we were really communicating to them the importance of plugging this funding gap, what, what would you have to say? Like, what, what does this mean and why is it so crucial that in the next couple of years, you know, I know that obviously with the global financial crisis and things like that, there's you know, obviously a pressure on governments competing interests asking for money, but why is it crucial that we get governments to support this effort? You know, there are many reasons, and I think the best way to, to understand this to, is to um, reflect on why did the World Health Assembly, which is the meeting every year of all the health ministers who gather in WHO, World Health Organization, each year, why did they declare polio eradication, a global public health emergency this year. And the reason is that if we don't succeed in eradicating polio, this virus will come back and will have devastating consequences. The eradication program has really changed the epidemiology of the disease so that in recent years where we have had outbreaks in Tajikistan and in, in the Congo and in other areas, the disease has not only affected children, it has affected adults. And when this disease strikes adults, a very large proportion of adults die from this disease. So it's a devastating disease. It's not only paralyzes, it actually kills. And so there is an estimate that within a few years, we will go from less than 200 cases this year to more than 200,000 cases of paralytic polio. And they will really affect children all across the globe. So we really uh, owe it to our, our, our children and their children and generations to actually not fail at this stage. Now, how close we are at failing because of financial problems? Only this year, a, a number of campaigns in vulnerable countries right next to northern Nigeria, where there is still polio, campaigns had to be either cancelled or scaled back because of financial shortfalls. 
in 2013 alone, we are just about to begin this year, we already have a financial shortfall of about $700 million for us to be able to vaccinate children. You remember both uh, Rod and I mentioned to you that it's as simple as vaccinating every child, but you know that costs money. And so we have a, a funding shortfall of $700 million for us to vaccinate all these children in polio affected countries and it, in, and in countries that are at risk of getting outbreaks from, from polio. We have now tentative commitments of about 350 or so million dollars. We still have nobody who's come out and pledged the rest of the $300 million. So it's absolutely critical of what you were saying earlier, Michael, that each one of us has a responsibility and an obligation uh, to actually be activists to ensure that our governments, our parliamentarians, and our communities know the importance of, of how close we are to eradicate the only disease after smallpox that will be eradicated globally. This will be something that will prevent paralysis forever in perpetuity. Over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jaffrey. Um, I think tonight has been an incredible mix of, of so many different perspectives on, on one topic of polio, but it, uh, we always get those, those mixed ideas. It sounds so close to eradication and then there are certain things like funding shortfalls. So it, is a, it sounds like it's on a bit of a knife edge. We're moving in the right direction. We just keep, have to keep on pushing by the sound of it. Um, look, I'd really like to, to try and wind up this chat. Um, we'd also love to shout out to everyone who has been following this. That's fantastic. I know I've got a group of people in Pakistan who are following. I'm sure uh, each of the, uh, the people there have, have their own followers in their country. The last thing I'd like to finish is just with your, your quick elevator pitch. Since we live in a, uh, the, the days of the 10 second grab. So I would love to hear from each of you. you know, what's your message for polio and what it means to you? Um, I'll start with, with Audrey and for the people that are on my screen, I'm just going to move from left to right. So Audrey, over to you. I'd say let's get to all our friends and family and get on the bandwagon and make big donations. Get rid of it. <laughs> Thanks Audrey. Over to you Fatima in, uh, in Islamabad. I would say for me polio means patience. Uh, be patient with the countries who still have polio. Be understanding of the circumstances that surround the the epidemics and the endemics of polio in those countries. And just to have hangouts like this, and you know, to have people from all walks of life, from all the different countries, to just come together and to talk about polio and to be so concerned about developing countries. It is truly an amazing compliment. And polio ends here. That's our campaign slogan. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Jeffrey. Polio eradication is uh, about a relentless pursuit of the missed child. And we need to do this. We need the support of everybody because we owe it to our children and the future generations of the world. Over to you. Beautifully said. And Janice, uh, for you, your comment? I think we need to thank the people who work so hard. We have so many people behind the scenes, whether they be volunteer donators, uh, immunization coalitions all over the world, Rotary Polio Plus. They're tired. They've been fighting for a long time. And I think we have to be cheerleaders. I know I do that when I speak to many different groups and thank them for all the time and all the money and all the love that they've shown and that it's not going to go unnoticed, that when we have a polio-free world, this is going to be a much better, better globe. Thank you. So, Judith, we haven't heard from you from the uh, Global Poverty Project, but your quick little grab there on polio. Hi, I'm Judith from the End of Polio campaign in the U.S., and I think it's wonderful to hear so many people who are so dedicated to this cause. and. We have to keep fighting. We are so close to making this the second human disease to eradicate in history. And it's wonderful to hear the commitments that each of you have made and the advocacy work that you've been doing. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Judith. Ksenia, your, uh, your last words there? Sorry, just have to unmute your mic there. i got to get better at that, the mic. Um, I just want to say that this is 
uh, possible. This is a reality, and I just want my generation, you know, if I could speak on behalf of them, I just want them to understand that. So, uh, you know, as a woman, as an artist, as a future mother, I just want to raise awareness, spread the message. We're so lucky that we have Twitter, we have Facebook. I mean, we didn't have this years ago, and the fact that we can reach so many people and we don't even have to move from our chairs is just an incredible thing and I think it's a shame not to take advantage of that so spreading awareness is is my goal. Wonderful, some fantastic words. Michael, over to you. Um, well they say Darcy that um, the 20 million or so volunteers who help contribute to End in Polio each year, they say that this constitutes the largest nonviolent army in history. And I guess what I'd say to people is that there's still room for more soldiers, I guess, to join that. Um, I would encourage people to be part of history. Um, and if I could just end on a practical note, what I'd encourage everyone to do who's watching this is to perhaps spend five minutes afterwards, write an email to your local representative, whether it's a member of parliament, a senator, a congressman, and actually tell them why you believe in a polio-free world and ask them to support this, hopefully financially. I think that could make a world of difference. Wonderful. Thanks there, Michael. Uh, Rod, over to you in India. Thanks, Darcy. Um, when Rotary launched the Global Polio Eradication Initiative in 1988, there were 350,000 children paralysed by polio every year. And this year, the latest data we have as of the 30th of October, uh, there's 177 children across the world that were paralyzed this year. And, uh, you know, I think it's a, a really nice demonstration of the fact that we're unbelievably close to getting this thing done. And we just need everyone's support from politicians to, uh, to people on the ground generating money to help us get it done to the people who are actually working, the heroes, the frontline workers at the front line who are vaccinating kids. We're unbelievably close to uh, getting polio finished. We just need everyone working together for these next couple of years. Thanks, Dars. Thanks, Rod, and uh, thank you, everyone. My, my little just last quick grab is, is today I was giving a workshop with a whole bunch of, um, they're called ComNet. They do all the communications to make sure every person gets vaccinated and families know about it. And the inspiration that was flowing around that room today was incredible. These are the people who, who deal with the social mobilizers who are administering vaccines day in, day out in unbelievable conditions. And they've been doing for a long time, as we heard from the panel. And to be able to share with these people the, the advocacy that's happening outside of Pakistan and to now learn what's happening within Pakistan, I've, I've never felt the connection of so many people working together on one thing. And so I have the utmost amount of respect and acknowledgement for those people on the ground, but also those advocating everywhere. So it's, uh, I, I feel like I'm a very privileged person to be able to enter into both those worlds today. Um, just to finish off, we would just like to say thank you to everyone who has joined in this conversation. A huge thank you to our people, uh, the panellists who were on here today. A wonderful variety of many different angles and fantastic responses. And just to finish off, please go to uh, the End of Polio website to learn some more. And we've spoken a lot about the World Health Organization, UNICEF, um, Rotary, of course, uh, CDC, who is another one of those partners for the Global, global GPE, uh, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, March of Dimes in Canada, um, the, the group in Pakistan, who are at the end of polio.com slash Pakistan, uh, Ksenia, following your work very closely, and many others. So please go to the end of polio.com. And you can learn some more there and just engage with, with all those different options. It's just been fantastic. So a big hurrah to everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Google Hangout sometime in the future. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, um, you've done a